Since its release over two years ago, Logitech's G Pro Wireless has gradually become adopted as by far the most popular gaming mouse for competitive first-person shooters. Over 20% of top-level players are choosing this mouse as their weapon of choice over a range of competitive titles where big money is on the line. And today we're going to find out just how much better they can make that mouse with their new offering, the G Pro X Super Lite. On paper, this is the best gaming mouse that you can currently buy for competitive FPS. PS, but it's also $150. That's almost double the price of the new Glorious Model O wireless, so that's mainly what I want to discuss in this video. Is it actually worth it? Let's start off with what hasn't changed here versus the original G Pro Wireless. First is the shape, which it's understandable why this hasn't changed since the original shape was embraced so well by so many users. So it's still a medium sized mouse with minimal side taper and the hump is directly in the middle. Compared to the Viper Ultimate and the Model O Wireless, the G Pro X Super Lite is about the same length but has less of a taper in the middle and is a bit taller. That last point is an important one for claw grip users like myself who prefer prefer to have a bit more volume at the rear of the mouse as a point of contact, the Viper Ultimate and Model O Wireless lack this area of support and are better suited towards fingertip grip in my opinion. The scroll wheel is also the same as the original as far as I can tell and that's a good thing because this is personally my favourite scroll wheel of any gaming mouse so far. The left and right clicks are not the same on the Super Lite, they are just a little bit heavier and louder compared to the original and also compared to the Viper Ultimate and Model O. The clicks still feel incredibly sharp and fast though with extremely minimal pre-travel and post-travel which is what is most important. The left side buttons feel about the same as the old model, maybe just a little bit softer and you also won't be able to swap these out like you could with the original. The right side buttons have been completely removed though which is a very important note for left handed users and the ridge here is also a little bit more pronounced but that's not something that I personally noticed while gaming. Something else that's been removed here for the sake of dropping weight is RGB lighting and that's totally fine by me. Instead, we're just left with a light coat of silver paint for the G logo. Also, the three LED indicators on the top have now just been reduced to one and by default, when turning the mouse on or waking it up, it'll display your battery status first, then your DPI level. Although the DPI cycle button from the bottom has also been removed. So your only option for changing DPI is via Logitech's G Hub software or by a assigning one of the two left mouse buttons to do that function. Now personally I just leave my mouse on 800 dpi for both desktop and gaming use so this doesn't really bother me but I can definitely see how that would be a bit of an inconvenience for some users. One of the biggest changes with the G Pro X Super Lite before we even get to the weight are the skates on the bottom. The skates are something that I usually upgrade to aftermarket ones for any mouse that I use for an extended period of time and every time I've done that it's made a huge huge difference. So the skates on the G Pro X Super Lite are easily on par with some of the best aftermarket skates that I've used. Absolutely huge surface area of zero additive PTFE, big thumbs up here. You can also swap the receiver cover to one with a PTFE pad if you prefer, although this will make the mouse 2 grams heavier and I personally didn't notice a difference in terms of glide. They also include some rubberized grip tape in the box which is another common third party accessory for gaming mice and it's a nice addition here. I definitely think this is an upgrade over the base coating. Having said that, if you order the white model, you still get black grip tape, which just completely ruins the clean vibe here of this mouse. So yeah, not really a fan of that. But now let's talk about the weight. Logitech are advertising this as a sub 63 gram mouse. My model comes in at 61 grams out of the box and just 59 grams when removing the USB cover on the bottom. This means it's about the same weight as much smaller mice like the Razer Viper Mini, while also being wireless and without 
using a honeycomb shell. That is seriously impressive. This makes it around 15 grams lighter than the Viper Ultimate, 8 grams under the Model O Wireless, and 20 grams less than the original G Pro Wireless. And despite those huge weight reductions, the G Pro X Superlight still manages to feel like a very high quality, balanced mouse with even weight distribution. It basically feels like an empty G Pro Wireless, and that's a good thing. So at just 60 grams without being tethered to a cable, you can just throw this thing around all day. The weight reduction on the Superlight versus the original G Pro Wireless is black and white. It really is a huge upgrade. Versus the 69 gram Model O Wireless, there is a slight difference there too. Eight to nine grams might not sound like a lot, but in the end, that is a 15% difference, which does sound a bit more substantial when you put it that way. My own user experience with the G Pro X Superlight is an extremely positive one, and I can easily say that this is my favorite gaming mouse at the moment. In a way, it combines my two previous favorite mice, the lightweight feel of the Viper Mini, but then that excellent build quality and wireless experience of the G Pro Wireless. It gives you this feeling of no restriction, where you have that super lightweight, but you also don't have to worry about a cable slapping around on your desk. So for me at least, this is the ultimate gaming mouse, and I do consider it an upgrade over the two previous mice that I was kind of swapping between before, the original G Pro Wireless and the Viper Mini. Now, for the amount of time that I play first person shooters, I can justify the price, which is 150 US dollars. Now, that is pretty expensive compared to a lot of other similar offerings like the Viper Ultimate and the Model O Wireless, but I also think that in comparison to a high-end gaming keyboard or a pair of headphones or maybe even a microphone, uh, $150 isn't that bad when it buys you the best of the best. Having said that, we just can't ignore the competition. The Razer Viper Ultimate, which was recently reduced to around $100, although I'm not sure how long that price will last, and the glorious Model O Wireless, which is just $80. The reason that I personally don't use either of those mice comes down to grip preference. I just don't find that there's enough volume and support at the rear of those mice. But some of you might actually prefer that about those mice. If you use a fingertip grip, those two mice, uh, in my opinion, are a bit better for that particular grip style. If that's the case, either of these two are an excellent choice. The shape is almost identical between them, so it's really going to come down to the minor details and the pricing in your region. Also, if you're willing to pay extra for the charging dock that comes with the Viper Ultimate. So I'm a big fan of the new G Pro X Superlight from Logitech, and I do think that that price is justified if it buys you the best of the best, which in my opinion, this really is. So really looking forward to playing a lot more with this one. Uh, if you are interested, I will leave the links down below, but do keep in mind that stock is looking pretty dry for the moment. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.